Good morning. Happy Travel Tuesday. For those of you in the U.S., this is the start of our holiday travel season because on Thursday we have Thanksgiving. So if you are headed over the river and through the woods or over the country, stay tuned. I've got some travel tips for you today to make your travels hopefully a little more awesome. All right. This is Happy Trails Hiking and you're watching the Healthy Lifestyle Show. As I said, today is Travel Tuesday and I am offering tips for travel on the Healthy Lifestyle Show. I offer encouragement for you to live the life you love. And so let's get into this today and go from there. I do want to say hello to the few folks that are in the room already this morning and uh, say hello to Gary from Life on the Trail, Lori Bryant, Desmond Donders, and Steve, the Outdoor Nomad. It's great to see all of you in the room today. Are you guys traveling for your Thanksgiving? That's my question. So I went searching for travel tips because I heard on the news this morning that Denver Airport, International Airport, is closed. They've canceled, well, we had six flights out from St. Louis to Denver by like, it was supposed to be like eight o'clock this morning. I guess I quit watching the news before that, but by seven o'clock this morning and six of them had already been canceled. So six out of six, none, none are flying. So if that, that's a, that's a big thing. So what do you do then? Um, so that's good. Um, and free to laugh now is here and is offering a travel tip that Wow, I, I didn't even think of. <laughs> tip, travel only from your couch to your kitchen. Well, that's that's a good tip. I, I would like to do that. However, I do like my family and I do want to get to see them. So this is not my year to host. So I get to travel this this year as well. So that's good. Um, now, um, so my travel tips today are going to be about safety, planning, fun, and I've got a little bonus one about pets. So that's, that's um, from my reading. Let's just go from there. So safety travel tips, safety travel tips. If you are road tripping, if you're road tripping for your holiday travel, make sure that your car is ready to go. So have you gotten an oil change lately? Have you gotten all your fluids topped off? How are your tires? Have you taken a look at those lately? So just kind of do a checkup. Even if you don't take it into a mechanic, do a checkup on your car and make sure everything is ready to go. Speaking of your car, things that you need to add into your car. Um, it's chilly in a lot of places and downright cold across some of the U.S. And I am, um, well, I'm concerned about travel and being being cold. So make sure that you have a blanket, either a safety blanket or just a blanket in your car. They say that it's good to carry candles and things to build a fire should you need to if you got stuck. Um, lighting a candle in your car will warm up your car a lot, even if your car has broken down and won't run. So do it safely, of course. Um, if you have, um, always have a flashlight in your car. You know, that's just one of those things that you should do. And make sure that you have <clears throat> enough food and water for 24 hours. Um, because most of the time rescue can get to you in 24 hours, but should you break down and not be able to, um, not be able to go having food and water for 24 hours for everybody in your car is a good safety tip to have. Um, and so let's see, um, People are answering my questions. So Outdoor Nomad says, traveling to a wildlife refuge Friday through Saturday. That'll be awesome. Life on the Trail spending the holiday in Central Oregon. That's that's cool, too. That's great. Um, and Desmond's Donders, Dave, 
says, Desmond is good to go. Yes. Well, Desmond happens to uh, be a place where you can sleep and eat. So you are set that way. Um, my opinion on flying standby. Well, I've never done that, to be honest. Um, Matt has flown standby before, I guess if flights are canceled, that's, and you have to go, then that's, that's the best way. That's the best way to go. Um, one of the tips that Matt gave me from flying in business so often was that if your flight gets canceled or there's changes, make sure that you one have the app for the airline that you're flying two, have the number for customer service and three have that airline tagged ready to go follow that airline on twitter or social media so that you can get response as quickly as possible so those are my my flying tips um other than you know Pack your patience when you're going to an airport because you just, it's the busiest week. I mean, today's a busy day. Tomorrow's a hugely busy day. And same thing for Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a madhouse <laughs> to be honest. So get ready for your crowds and get ready for, um, get ready for all of, all of that. So pack your patience. Have all of your IDs and everything that you need when you're headed to the airport. Make sure your children have what they need. And we're going to talk about fun here in a little bit, but activities that you'll um, you'll get. Hello, Justin and Christina RV Van Life. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming. It's been a little bit. Um, Free to laugh now is asking if I ever camp in the snow. That is a story for another day, but um, we have. So um, let's get back to safety and travel tips. So today on the show, we're talking about travel tips and um, getting ready for a holiday travel. Because if you are in the U.S., it is the it is the start of our travels holiday travel season. So we talked about car safety. Um, speaking of flying and having all your IDs and things, make sure that when you're packing, you, um, follow the regulations for the airlines. Make sure that you know what you cannot, can and cannot take in your carry-ons. Also make sure that you try to pack, um, considerately to consider the other people who are flying and consider how much you can lift and put up in the overhead bins if you're planning to carry on an item. Um, don't, uh, you know, don't rely on the kindness of strangers to get things in and out of the bins. I'm only five foot tall. So sometimes reaching up into those overhead bins is kind of difficult for me. Um, and so that's, that's something. Um, and Gemma's Journey Grace is here. Hello, Gemma. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. Today we're talking about holiday travel tips. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about for planning um, is to make sure that you know what time your flights are or what time you're expected to be there um, for your event that you're traveling for. Traveling early in the day is usually better than um, waiting till the last minute. So if, you know, say tomorrow you got to work a full day and you have to travel, um, or you want to travel so that you can be there by, by Thursday morning, then yeah, go ahead. But if you can travel early in the day and take your time to get where you needed to get to, that would be a, much better idea. Um, and speaking, well, when you're traveling in the earlier in the day, flight delays don't happen as often in the morning as they do in the afternoon. Um, and airports are less congested. <laughs> and lots of time the TSA agents and your, um, and your agents that are working the desks are 
well, they're fresher in the morning and it's, and it's easier to, to, you know, smile. <laughs> um, so the other thing is when you're traveling by car on, if you leave earlier in the day, you'll have a chance to um, work around those regular traffic patterns patterns in any city that you would go through. So that would, that will make life a little bit easier. Um, as for planning, if you're taking a road trip, then plan some stops at some fun roadside attractions. For instance, we're headed through Southern Illinois and Southern Illinois has a city called Metropolis. Well, if you know anything about comics, then Metropolis is the home of Superman and it happens to have a huge statue of Superman. And it's a fun place to stop, especially if you've never been through there. And you can do, um, if, even if you need to just stop at the rest area, they have a cutout of Superman. You can put your head in it and all that stuff. So it's a fun thing to, it, it's a fun thing to do. Um, and it breaks up the drive some. So make sure that if you can and you have time to plan those, you know, activities, there are lots of things to see on the way. Make the road trip part of the trip. So, um, and let's see. Our hunter travels is here. Hello. It's good to see you, Sean. Thanks for coming. Great tip. That's how we got to over 330 places. Yes, you guys have a ton of places on the on the database. So yeah, you've gone so far. And Outdoor Nomad says, yep, leaving at 5 a.m. on Friday. Nice. I uh, probably won't be awake at 5 a.m. on Friday to say hello, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> that's good. I hope that you have safe travels out to the wildlife refuge. That'll be really cool. Um, Life on the Trail says Springfield, Oregon is... is has fuel, full murals of the Simpsons. That's cool. I remember a few years ago when, uh, well, when the Simpsons like had their 10 year uh, anniversary, they had all of the towns in America named Springfield because that's the town the Simpsons live in. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right. So planning. Yes. The one thing that Matt and I always forget it when we're planning is to um, is washer fluid for your windshield washers um, or windshield. Yeah. Windshield washer wipers. Um, the road grime that happens in the winter, um, either due to snow or mud or salt that they've put on the road, it, it all gets kicked up and then you end up with the schmaltzy, windshield. And so we um, forget the windshield washer fluid and we always end up buying some at a truck stop along the way. So yeah, um, that's one of those things that we that, that we like to remember. Um, and I will probably pick up some today. Um, and Desmond Stander says, tourist signs are like, look, squirrel on our on our trips further field. Yes. Yeah. So th those are my favorite. I love seeing signs along the side of the highway that say, this thing is happening. And as a matter of fact, if you're ever traveling um, across South Dakota, you'll see seawall drug along the way for miles and miles and mi hundreds of miles before you get to wall drug and wall drugs really well the town has grown up around wall drug but it's it's really quite a tourist stop and it, they've got ice cold water and that was a thing so um the other thing i always think of when we're talking about road trip signs are sea rock city when you're headed across uh tennessee because sea rock city they painted on the sides of barns or on at least one side, roof of barns, say, see Rock City. And it's over in the Chattanooga Mountains area. So that's cool. Um, let's see. 
our haunted trail will say, are historical signs brown in other states? I don't remember. They are in Ohio. Yes. Historical markers are brown in our state too. And in Iowa, that's how I found the um, Chief uh, Wapolo. Wapolo? Yes. Chief Wapolo uh, historic site was because it was a brown sign. Um, and, oh, Gemma, good, a good idea for planning there, Gemma. Gemma says, I've already got special assistance booked for my trip to the USA in June. You're coming to the US in June? That's very exciting, Gemma. I'd love to hear more about that at some point. That's cool. Um, and uh, Life on the Trail says they start in Idaho, the wall drug signs. Yes, I gotcha. I gotcha. That's fun. Rachel Rossin's here. Hi, Rachel. We're talking about um, travel tips, holiday travel tips. So um, I was talking about planning and packing earlier. I really wanted to um, talk about planning your patience and packing your patience. We had talked about earlier, I mentioned earlier that there were six flights out that were supposed to go from St. Louis to Denver this morning. And there, that's not happening because, well, St. Louis, well, St. Louis is fine. We don't have any rain or snow here, but Denver is, has a winter storm that's gone through. So, um, and let's see. Um, also pack your patience because of traffic. Also pack your patience because family dynamics. Can we just say that? Family dynamics and everybody kind of knows what we mean. Holidays are stressful. And tomorrow on the Wellness Wednesday show, we're definitely going to talk about holiday stress. Um, but family dynamics, getting together as a family sometimes can be stressful for people. Number one, we have a mixture of people that used to all, well, used to live in the same place or people that if you're going to your, you know, grandparents' house, then you probably have your mom or dad's family coming together and the and it's just stressful. You have to you have to behave and you have to know what to talk about and what not to talk about. And, you know, is it a quiet household or uh, is there opportunity to, you know, be loud? D does the family that you're going to visit just yell at each other all the time? Um, you know, how does that work? And so just pack your patience and Remember that there, um, that the stress of being there doesn't have to interrupt the travel to get there. So, um, also traffic is bad <laughs> and sitting in traffic is bad. Um, but yes, um, and yeah, so pack your patience. Remember that people in stores and gas stations who are working are um, stressed and ready to be on holiday as well. So they're uh, they're waiting for you to get your stuff in leaf and do what you needed to do. So that's good. Um, our Hunter Travel says, sometimes <laughs> can you... Choose your friends. Your family is cast upon you. Yes, you can choose who you hang out with most of the time. But at holidays, you're expected to hang out with your family, I guess. Or if you're expected to hang out your, with your family, then there's the extra pressure of being expected to hang out with your family. And um, also says, is it 107 degrees in your in-laws house? Well, I will bring that up on tomorrow's Wellness Wednesday show. Um and Gemma says, visiting family can be difficult. I usually take things such as music or my writing stuff to keep calm. Well, let's talk about keeping calm on a road trip. Because sometimes, I'm just going to use that again. Sometimes being in the car for long periods of time is new 
to a family. Not all families take road trips all the time. So, um, you know, if your family's not used to being in the car together for long periods of time, make sure that you have things that your that each member of your family enjoys doing on a normal everyday basis. Now, it may be that you can't watch TV on your road trip. You know, the, there's no Wi-Fi in your car. That's that's a thing. Um, and you don't have unlimited data. So um, make sure that you download those music selections that your kids want to listen to or that you want to listen to and download the videos or movies that you would want to to have or watch in the car so that everybody can have their own alone time. Kind of, you know, I understand that we're all in the same space together, but we don't need to do the Lori's on my side of the car thing. You know, if what your people, family likes to do when, on a normal basis is to watch TV or movies or play games or whatever, Make sure you have those. Now, <laughs> if you're like me and you just want to talk to everybody all the time, um, the, that can get a little tiresome um, or a lot tiresome. And I'll apologize to Lori for my past grievances um, <laughs> from when we were children. But, you know, I really do like, you know, to talk to people. And I like to have people, people entertain me. So. Um, when we rode motorcycles as a, when I was young, I would ride behind mom and we had this intercom system and she would, uh, we'd play, we'd play word games or whatever, but you know, have those games and things that you can play quietly or do quietly crossword puzzles or things like that in the car. Um, also in an airplane, I have been flying with, well, I don't fly often, but when I do fly, flying with families, you know, they can't, well, there's four people in the family, they can't all sit on a row of three. Um, so they split up two and two. And I got to ride with um, a dad and his son one day, but the son didn't have anything to do on the airplane. And I happened to be watching The Hobbit. I happened to be watching The Hobbit on my iPad when I had it. And um, and so I had my headphones in and then realized that the kid was looking over at my movie. <laughs> and so I I asked the dad, I said, it's The Hobbit. It's, you know, not it, there's there's a little bit of, you know, fight scenes in it. He was like, he can watch it. It's fine. And so I um, I. I had a splitter for my headphones and I just splittered that in and uh, his dad had some headphones and it allowed him to watch the movie as well. And he was like, his dad said, that was the best plane ride my that we've ever had with him. And I went, okay, well, new tool for you is to uh, get download some movies so that he can just go into his, like, I didn't have to talk to him. I mean, not that I would have minded. He was a nice kid, but he didn't have to talk to me was more more like it. And he just sat and he watched the movie and I sat and watched the movie. And when the uh, uh, flight attendant came and asked if we wanted something to drink, I, I asked for something and got it. And he asked for or his dad got him something. and It was all good. So um, that's that's a that's a great tip and thanks for making me think of that, Gemma. I appreciate it. Uh, and that triggering was visiting family can be difficult. And I usually take such things as music or my writing to keep calm. And, you know, um, that's another thing to consider when you're with your family. And we'll talk about those more tomorrow on Wellness Wednesday, things like that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So that goes along with fun. And um, so my general road trip fun thing is ask your family, if you're going on a road trip with your family, ask your family what fun things they want to do in the car. 
or <clears throat> what fun things they think they will find along the way. And Google Maps is a good place to start with this. So um, yeah, that's that's my fun thing. Um, you know, Lori, um, Lori and I are sisters, and when we would travel, Lori would read. And that was her fun thing. And she just wanted to read. It was, that was what she wanted to do. And that's what she did at home too. A lot was read a lot of books. But I think that when she, you know, as we've gotten older and we go on road trips together, she picks out places that she wants to go. I pick out places that I want to go and stop and it, and it works out that way. Um, and Rachel Rosson said, that's what me and Cranny did on the way home from Canada and she had a splitter. Yes. Isn't that, it's a good invention. <laughs> it's a good invention. Um, that's the best. All right. So pets, don't forget about your pets here for uh, Thanksgiving and or for holiday travel. Um, so pets need to, um, well, need a place to go. And they're not always welcome at your family's house or there's that's not a good place for them. So um, one, well, if you all remember, way back in August, I had Tanya from Raising Your uh, Pets Naturally on the show. And I wanted to share her recommendation for um, leaving your pets at home. And she talks about finding the perfect, perfect, the best uh, pet sitter or boarding kennel for your dog while you're out of town. Um, and she has a, a blog called What to Do When You Can't Take Your Dog on Vacation. And um, she has lots of ideas. So I just wanted to make that resource available to all of you. And I will put it in the description of the video. But you can find um, her her blog at RaisingYourPetsNaturally.com. And um, I just searched holiday travel on, on her blog there. So um, what am I missing? Lori says... Now I listen to audiobooks while I drive. Yes. And our haunted travel says Marianne normally reads to me while we're driving. It makes the trip go quicker. Yes. Lori will Lori will read. When Lori and I are on our sister's trip, we were headed up Highway 1 or 441, I guess, up in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. When we were by ourselves, they have an auto tube an auto tour, not an audio tour, but an auto tour and it's self-guided. And there's a book. Lori read me the whole book all the way up and then all the way down. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, does, I hope that you all got something out of this and I hope that these tips are helpful. I appreciate you all being here today. I do appreciate all the thumbs ups and, um, I did, I am finding out more and more about, how YouTube works all the time and thumbs ups versus thumbs downs are uh, is a ratio that YouTube looks at when it is deciding whether to suggest your video or not. So um, I appreciate all the thumbs ups. I'm still working for 20 and I still have one um, one more show this week. I will not be on on Thursday and Friday. I will be spending time with my family so for the holiday. Um, but I will be on tomorrow. And um, so for Wellness Wednesday, and we will be talking about holiday stress. So uh, please come back for that show tomorrow. And until then, do a few things for me. One, hit the thumbs up and come back and leave a comment. It does help. YouTube know that there's interaction with this show and that people enjoy watching it. Two, share this with someone else that you think could use some holiday travel tips. And three, go out and live the life you love today. And remember, you are not replaceable. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks.